fader window. When it comes to mixing between the two tracks, it will probably be a good idea to become familiar with the fader window. The host master tempo is displayed here and is flanked on either side by volume faders for each of the decks, giving you a simple volume control that you can work with. Underneath this are two rows of dots. These dots are used so that you can visually see how close the beat matching between the two tracks is. Beneath this is a yellow line, which shows just how out of sync the two tracks are. If there is no line displayed here, then the tracks are matched. To switch between the two tracks manually, you can use the crossfader that you have here. By default, moving this left will mute the right deck and vice versa. To start an automatic crossfade, all you need to do is click on either of these arrows to the left and the right. The A and B buttons can also be used to override the crossfade position for that deck. Left clicking will cause the track to ignore the crossfade position and continue as if the fader was fully in that direction, whereas right clicking on the PC or control clicking on the Mac will effectively mute the track's output. If I quickly call up the vinyl external control, you can find a few controls that relate specifically to how the crossfader works. Normally, when doing a crossfade, DJs tend to use a linear crossfade, and this can be set up simply by making sure this button is active. If this control is inactive, however, then the volume curve of the crossfade can be altered by using the curvature control. The reverse button is used for switching the crossfader control so that it works inversely. That is, the volume is decreased the closer the fader is to the deck. So when fully left, deck A will be completely muted. The next video we will have a look at the peak scope and the spectroscope, which can be used to give you good visual feedback about the tracks being played.